All right, here's our tips and tricks for the age group online qualifiers as well as the occupational games. Stay tuned for more. All right, event one, five rounds, 15 handstand push-ups, 15 dumbbell shoulder to overhead, 50s and 35s. It's gonna be different age group uh, breakdowns. Actually, not a ton of breakdown until you get to 55. So uh, then 15 calorie row. We're gonna have some more tips and tricks following this, um, but very similar to uh, event one or test one for both teams and individuals. Think about the handstand push-ups um, on the dumbbell shoulder overhead. You know, try to move them as fast as you can and as efficient as you can. Probably start out with a jerk. Don't go to a push press early. Um, if you can move those, if you got good shoulder stamina, then yeah, you're gonna make up a little bit of time there. Um, you wanna push the row, I feel like, uh, if you're good at the handstand push up and dumbbell shoulder to overhead because the row is almost a little bit of recovery for those shoulders, but it will add up a little bit. That pull um, does actually take a little bit of a toll on the press. So, like I said, Tejan and Jake are gonna have a little bit more right after this, but a couple things to think about. We got here, handstand push-ups, dumbbell shoulder overhead, calorie row. We're gonna touch on a couple points with each, something to think about in the workout, maybe a little bit outside the norm cues to help you move faster and more efficient through. So, handstand push-ups, you got the box set up here, just like they did for quarterfinals. Tejan's gonna show two good reps. What you notice, she's inside here. The biggest thing, she's kipping as high as she can and then bringing her knees as low as she can. We want you to think about here, this workout is all about time under tension. So the faster you can cycle these reps, the better, because the less tension you're putting on your shoulders throughout that. So if you're doing a huge kip, that's gonna help you use shoulders less, and then also be on your shoulders less because you're moving faster. Here, it's a 75 reps of these handstand push-ups, 75 reps of the dumbbell shoulder overhead. That's gonna compound, that's 150 reps. We're gonna recommend out the gate, if you can't stand broken the whole time, that's okay. Break up the first set. Eight and seven is okay to go to. Same thing for the dumbbells. If you are, got the shoulder boulders and can go the whole time though, cycle fast and move through. We'll come over here. We have the dumbbell shoulder to overhead. 35 for the ladies. Tage is gonna clean them up. Show three good reps. You'll notice vertical chest as always with anything going overhead. The biggest thing we're looking for here, she's locking out hips at the top, but we're gonna use the push jerk. We're definitely recommending that rather than the push press. Slightly slower, but just that little dip underneath, nothing huge is gonna save that because you're not gonna have to elevate it quite as far for each and every rep, and then it's gonna save you in later rounds. If you feel great with a push press out the gate, and like we said, you have great shoulder endurance, then try that, but otherwise, quick dip underneath and go. Same thing, if you have to go eight, seven, not a huge deal, pick it up quick, be disciplined with the clock. Um, but if you do feel good, you can cycle 15 reps really fast on these. Then we're gonna move to the rower. With the rower, Try to get that monitor reset and at zero before you begin. Ladies, just row wherever you normally row. Men the same. Taze you what, usually between a six and seven. Men usually between a seven and eight. Little pro tip here. We're gonna recommend that you tape the rower like so. Something comfortable that you can slip in it out quickly, but it's not gonna uh, inconvenience you and then you're not gonna waste time having to tighten it and untighten each strap. So if you use a little tape there, it's comfortable when you can go because it's only 15 calories. For this, Tasia, Classic rowing, long and strong pulls, which is a huge deal in this workout just because there's so much shoulder endurance. All we wanna do is finish with the arms. So Teja, she's gonna drive with the hips, come back with her chest, and then finish with the arms. Very little arms, huge, driving through the midfoot. Just think that, leg drive, leg to let drive, leg drive throughout the entire row. That's event one, knock it out, have fun. Event two, 60, 50, 40 GHDs, six, five, four rope climbs, 50 40 or 60 50 40 pistols all i got for you is warm up those pistols for our mayhem athletes you should be good and loose good and warmed up good and ready for those ghds because we do a lot of them um, however we're sorry we don't do a lot of pistols uh, but if you've been doing the following what's rich doing i've done it twice in the last couple weeks so a lot of uh i will not be doing this one sorry guys uh, i might try some of these other versions but i will not be doing that one uh, smooth on the ghds uh, rope climbs, you know, up and down the rope as, as quick as you can under control. Uh, don't go to failure at any point. Come down, shake those arms out, get some chalk, whatever you got to do, but uh, be smooth on those rope climbs. Pistols, just knock them out. Um, 
I think, like I said, Jake and Tasia on the other event one will have some more tips and tricks for those pistols. That's gonna be, honestly, for me, that was the biggest thing was taking probably 45 minutes to an hour uh, to warm up those hips, warm up those knees, warm up those ankles, getting ready for the pistols. Event two, we got Tasia's good side here, the back of her head. Uh, GHD <laughs> rope climb pistols. Oh man, uh, we don't have the riser, so don't worry about that. This is something, I don't know if I want to give this away, I guess we'll give it away. Um, when we GHD, we like to GHD a little bit with our feet a little bit farther back. Um, so we actually lift less of our, she even goes back a little farther than I would personally. I like to be a little bit more towards right here. Um, yeah, so I'm actually lifting less of my body. Uh, it's all personal preference, it's what you're used to. I wouldn't switch to that in the middle of this workout or for this event. Um, it takes a little bit more um, extension of the hip and back, uh, but that works. So. Um, yeah, Tage, let's see some GHDs. Some? When was the last time you did some? Oh! Yeah! Mm -hmm. Woo! There you go, firing Still those hips. Um, you want to try to use those hips as much as you can, use those abs because your quads are going to get lit up here in about, I don't know, what, two minutes of GHD is going to take two minutes? Smooth. Um, from there, we're going to do pistols, um, the most painful, awful movement in all of CrossFit. It hurts my knees just to do it. Um, yep, she's going to use that leg. See that heel coming off the ground if you have to. Um, that's, I mean, it's not efficient. I mean, it's not the most efficient thing, but um, if that's your limitation, that's what you got to do. If you need to, if you can get a um, climb in an Oli shoe, if you got some of those uh, lifter hip. Oh, Oli, this the is the mess out of this for sure. Um, yeah, so think about that. Um, get those hips good and loose, get those knees good and loose. Um, ankles, ankles. This everything. This is get super warm for this workout. Yep. We'll give a couple mobility tips later. And then just finding that rhythm on pistols is huge. Finding your balance and once you're popping side to side, even if it's a slow rhythm, getting your rhythm and go. So you're not getting off balance and having to reset a lot. So that 60 can really be a lot quicker if you are just 10. <sighs> Quick break, 10 like so. Um, yep, that's pretty much that on the pistol. Rope climb, um, you know, kind of dealer's choice. I don't know what wrap you do, but I do. Uh, I, I think they call it the Spanish, uh, Russian, I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, yeah, so on the rope climb, I don't really, everybody's different, so you really think about that, but make sure you get that foot locked in there. Um, you know, <coughs> this will tax the core a little bit, so I would honestly, you, there's two different things you can think about. If you can take shorter pulls and not be as high, I don't know, you kind of play around with it, I guess, in your warm up. Um, I don't really know what the correct answer is, but I would um, honestly think a little bit more, a couple more pulls um, might be a little bit better because you're not actually having to lift those uh, knees as high. And in this one more so, you'd almost, usually you wouldn't recommend this, but in this rope climb, as much arms and shoulder pull as yeah. you can because it's such heavy midline and, and legs. what I, I was thinking too is to keep my heart rate down, I like to, we practice a lot of, just so, you know, we have 15 foot or 16 foot ropes here but to get used to, if we had to use a 20 foot rope, we do a lot of just not jumping. Um, so I might not even jump actually, just to get a good tall pull here and start from there. I don't know, um, some, something to think about. It might be a little bit slower, but I think it might keep the heart rate down a little bit from jumping. Uh, but if, hey, if you're a jumper, then jump as high as you can. Think about that. Um, uh, yeah, and that, the first third of the workout is the first round. So if you wanna finish, in, you wanna finish the workout, you gotta finish the 60 pistols by the 640 mark, I think. So pace it out like that uh, and use your first round like so, and then try to pick up speed just a little bit in the 40s and go. Event three, 75 cleans at 135, 95, and 300 double unders. So uh, on the cleans, I really don't think there's much of a, uh, to be gained by going touch and go. You might be able to do one large set of touch and go or one you know medium set of touch and go. If you ever feel that grip go, then I would put that bar down and just start cycling some uh, singles. On the clean, I would get some plates that you know aren't bouncing as much. Uh, we, we have a little bit of, uh, we've got the Rogue Echo plates uh, that kind of dead, deaden the, the bounce. Um, so the faster you can get that bar settled and pick it back up is gonna be, I think, faster. Um, you waste a lot and use a lot of energy on the uh, negative part of the clean if you're doing touch and go. Uh, so just be smooth there. Make sure you're getting those elbows through. No, no reps here. Uh, I feel like they'll be watching that uh, as far as the, the tests go when they watch the videos. Then grab onto that jump rope and start knocking out some double unders. We've done a couple large sets of double unders. Uh, 300 is a 
is an aggressive amount. Your feet are gonna be a little bit taxed. Your calves are gonna be taxed from doing all those cleans, grip as well. So, um, you know, don't go to failure, but if you can do pretty big chunks here on the double unders, then go for it. All right, athletes, here we go. We got test three. We got power cleans and double unders. This one's really simple. Straight through 75 cleans. And then we're gonna finish with 300 double unders. Quite a lot there. Ladies, we got 95 pounds. Uh, for most of you guys, you're probably going singles the whole way. So like we said, use weights that hopefully fall, settle easily on the ground. If you are gonna do touch and go out the gate, we recommend a conservative set, maybe fives, then settle into quick singles. It's all about staying discipline, getting back to the bar. Biggest thing with power clean on your setup, as you know, chest up, hips low, that's gonna get more power. tasia has got the hook grip on the bar, hook grip the whole way. That's a big deal in this workout because grip's gonna fatigue here, and it's all gonna be about that heart rate on the double unders. Tasia, go ahead and do a few singles. Nice. Bar stays super close to the hips, explode, back under. One more, she's gonna catch that slight power and be done. A lot of you might be tempted to muscle clean unless you're just super strong and can muscle clean basically the whole way. We're gonna recommend the quick dip underneath. That time is not gonna matter. Your heart rate's gonna get jacked up anyways. So be efficient with these cleans, dip underneath. Uh, we don't recommend dive bombing on the way back down. If you are gonna do some touch and go sets, we'd say pass through the hips, keeping that chest high. So you don't fry out that low back. And then it's still quick reps there. And she's dipping back underneath that power rather than muscling. The biggest thing is gonna be once you go to singles, whether you do out the gate or after 15 to 20 reps, it's all about watching the clock and staying consistent, whether you're doing a rep every five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever your goal is to finish in, write that down, break it out on a piece of paper, and then do your singles within that amount of time because that's what'll get you finishing where you wanna be at. From there, you gotta come right to the double under. You're gonna be hurting, jacked up heart rate, but you have to pick it up, you have to start accumulating reps. Even if you trip, that's okay. You wanna get right back to the reps. Well, the biggest thing is, Tasia's demoing a loose grip on the handles. I like going a little bit further out here, but whatever you're used to, have that grip. From that, don't death grip them. Keep it slightly in front of the hips where she has them, and then consistent flicks of the wrists. All wrists, all wrists here, and break it up in your head however you want to mentally to help you get through it. Make sure you have a judge that can count and count well. Um, other than that, this one's a burner. Get super warmed up beforehand. Big grip, big heart rate, be ready to go. Event four, no stranger to the four rep max because it's been for all three of our uh, different tests, I guess. Uh, as you're warming up, you know, maybe twos. I wouldn't hit any fours until you're ready, you hit a weight that you're like, all right, this is gonna be my first set because that third and fourth rep really take it out of you. Um, when I actually did this, I, we messed around with it as an individual, but uh, didn't do that with the test for individuals. But when I did it on a team, um, I probably hit one weight um, too early, I guess. So I hit 278, I think it was. Um, and hit the four reps. Maybe should have hit that for two and then hit my next one so I could have had another attempt. But um, just think about that. Um, you're probably gonna get one, maybe two solid attempts at four reps. Because like I said, it does beat you up a little bit, take its toll on you. When you're thinking about order on these, um, that's something that we did on Thursday night. You could add that uh, Thursday night, this afternoon, whatever it is, uh, whenever you're watching this video, but get that one out of the way you could reattempt that later on if you felt like it. Um, but for me, that was my one attempt was, uh, was enough. So you can kind of play around with some of the orders of these, but um, I would definitely get event one out of the way. Uh, I'd get event four out of the way before you do all those pistols, personally. All right, event four, four rep max. If you've been following Mayhem Athlete, you're welcome. Actually, if you've been following Burger Strength, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Coach B and Sage. Yes, perfect timing for this. Uh, you should kind of have an idea of what you want to hit yeah. <laughs> if you've been following that cycle. Go do one of those calculators online, put top in your max, they'll tell you what your four rep would be and shoot for around that. Um, we, today, we did it today, most everyone that did test one, then test four like we talked about, but you could repeat it again on Saturday morning if you needed to. Probably not good to do after the pistols, but you do what you got to do. Um, as far as, what did you feel like with we, it when you went? We warmed up to 225. Um, and his then, max is like 410-ish. Yeah, 410, 415 probably. Um, and hit 225, stripped the bar. I was literally just going with Luke, trying to get him a little doubles. push. Hitting the doubles. I wouldn't hit a four. Um, that third and fourth rep are pretty taxing, so I would get something pretty close. What Luke did, um, he hit, I think his one rep max was 365 after Bergener when we tested it. Something like that, 385. I think it was 385. Yeah. And so, um, man, he looked fast through two and three. So we, he did hit a safety weight at like, he, 
I told him to kind of you feel it out. So if two feels really easy, I wouldn't, I would not waste a four. So, uh, but you want to get a lift in. So be smart about that. Um, I think his first lift was like 341 or something like that. And I'm not going to give away where, what he ended at. So um, probably first attempt, 80 to 90 percent of your one RM for that yep. first attempt of four. Building by twos there. Belt the mess out of this. Use a yep. leather belt. We yep. use the Rogue ones. They're yep. great. Perfect time to have that. Um, a lot of people, you're cat, like anomaly. Most people are going to collapse. And in training, we don't want to collapse, but this is competition. So if you're going to bad form, it's okay. This is the one time. Like max out, get your max. Be as clean as you can and efficient, but that's probably you're going to lose at your elbows. Yep. Uh, I mean, your legs might, but yeah, it's going to be mostly your, your core, your upper back, Everyone's your thoracic but... probably is where you're going to give, give way. And that's what's going to happen is it's just going to get too, up, too far in front. So really think about keeping that chest tall, brace that core. Um, you know, the more upright you can be, the better off. Uh, better bar placement that is, the more center to midline. Um, I mean, that's why we can back squat more than we can front squat. Most For of sure. the time, not all the time, but sometimes. And then it seemed like one, reps one and two are a little bit smoother, a little bit quicker. Big breath before three, and before that fourth rep, think about time under tension, but still, get that volume Brace. here, big time, press against that belt, and get ready to go, because the fourth one is the obviously fourth is a money maker. Yep, It's the, much, much harder than the third, but if you can hang on for the ride, then it's going to make a huge difference in your score. Get it. Event five, so we got 12, 9, 6, overhead squat, 165, 115, and burpee, box, jump overs, 30 inches. Like I said, there's not going to be a ton of uh, change over here till you get to 55, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I feel like the overhead squats, if you have the strength of it's in you, uh, you got to do those unbroken, and then be smooth on the burpee, box, jump overs. This is a little bit different of a test, I feel like, then the individuals and the teams in that the 963 you could really throttle those burpees i feel like 1296 you might have to be a little bit smarter uh, about how you cycle those things because 963 really blew up my legs and towards the end i didn't have that uh, that spring that i needed to get over that box so 30 inches is aggressive uh, be smooth on those, like I said, try to light up and, and move fast on those overhead squats. This is one you could probably test twice if you felt like maybe hitting it tomorrow, uh, that would be Friday, or and then maybe hitting it again Sunday. So <clears throat> this is one you can kind of play around with. It's relatively short um, and it shouldn't tax you too much. Like I said, it is a little bit more than the 963 of the individuals and the teams, but it's only you know a couple more reps. Athletes, event five, you are there. This is the last workout. It is a burn it down type workout. We got 1296 overhead squats and burpee box get overs for uh, 3544. I think even more, it's 165 for the men, 115 for the ladies, and then 30 inches for everyone. Overhead squats, uh, we have cues we're gonna use with everybody else. Obviously, same squat stance. Uh, for starters, if you can snatch men, probably over 185, ladies over 135, we'd love you to be able to squat snatch the first rep, get into it and go. If you don't have quite that high of a squat snatch, you got a power clean and jerk, put it overhead, that's okay. Uh, but Tasia's is gonna squat snatch it, start moving in the reps. If you got the shoulder mobility, you can go a little bit narrower grip. If you don't, you can go wider like so. Tasia's is really gonna work to stay midfoot here to heels, trying to get toesy because your quads are gonna get blown up from the burpees. Other than that, she's staying bar directly over her center of gravity. Um, try and stay as smooth as you can. If all possible, do not drop the bar. That's what's going to cost you a ton of time here as you're trying to shave off reps. You can move fast with these reps, but you got to be smooth. Smooth is fast. It's going to add up on the nines and the sixes, so be smart there. We'll come over to the burpee box get over. We're going to recommend for pretty much everyone the step up approach on the burpee. You have to jump on the box. Ladies, that's a big jump. So gather yourself and then hop over. So step up here. Jump on the box. If you can step down, Tasia's a little bit short, but she can still get there. That's an option as well if you got the long enough legs. The only other thing on the burpee, warm up every single rep. Don't do the strict push-up. Try to make the burpee as easy on yourself as possible. The heart rate's gonna get really high. It's a ton of power to get on this box. So we wanna save our legs as much as possible. Energy, use your whole body on the burpee, and then gather yourself before you jump. Lots of people are missing these, are almost missing, so don't miss any reps. Get over that burpee box, get over. Last workout, so finish it.